G'day YouTube, Warbles on a lot here with a movie about free range feral tomatoes making a break, getting out of the concentration camps and living in the wild. Now the story is that at a place called Gyra where there's already a well established concentration camp for tomatoes another brand new tomato concentration camp is being built at the moment and as a consequence, tomatoes, fearful of being incarcerated, are making a break for it, running away into the wild. So I thought we'd go for a little bit of a walk and a stalk, gently moving through the endangered species sanctuary to see if we can find evidence of wild free range feral tomatoes, unwilling to live the regimented lives required for them at the concentration camp for tomatoes under construction in Gyra. What have we here? Unless I miss my guess, that is a supermarket tomato run wild. Perhaps there will be more. This could be a nest of them. It could be anywhere. It's rumoured they lurk in rabbit burrows. Conservation biologists are not entirely certain why tomatoes work in rabbit burrows but the empirical evidence on the ground is irrefutable wild feral free-range tomatoes lurking camouflaging themselves look at that a green fruiting feral tomato. Wonder if there are any more. That is a rabbit burrow. Currently in use. Here is a rabbit burrow. Exhibiting the characteristic tomato seedlings. And here is a tomato plant that's been chewed upon, presumably by the rabbits that want to recolonize the burrow the tomato plant is growing out of. It may seem a wild hypothesis, but apparently the tomato plants are colonizing the rabbit burrows. Who knows? I'm sure you've uh, heard the list of the 10 worst movies of all times. The Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. They were six or eight feet in diameter. Grown on an experimental farm by scientists in the wilds of rural America. Fed radioactive fertilizers in the hope of increasing production. The rebellious feral tomatoes appear to be immobile and, if anything, slightly undersized. Unlike the killer tomatoes of the American Hollywood legend. Perhaps the tomatoes have colonized an intermediate host, found somebody who will 
convey their seeds to the rabbit burrow. Could there be an intelligent agency intervening on behalf of the feral tomatoes? Deliberately implanting them as it were into the Australian wilderness where there used to be a food forest back before the sheep came and ate all the food plants. There was another food plant growing here, an introduced one. A good one too, it was called blackberry. But somebody decided that because you can't feed blackberries to a sheep, therefore a blackberry was not considered to be a food plant, although people could eat it. It was considered a noxious feral pest. And therefore, they introduced artificially bred disease called rust. And all the blackberries went rusty. And that's one less food plant the proletariat can rely on in hard economic times, isn't it? Nobody has any feral potatoes or feral carrots. Occasionally there are some feral turnips. But uh, seems to me a feral tomato could be a really good thing. Free range feral tomatoes. Let us hope that they prosper. Having established that the New England Tableland feral free range tomatoes are colonising an endangered species sanctuary, we might now go out and have a look and see if they can live in the badlands of the sheep farm. Sound like an interesting proposition? Even if we can't find feral tomatoes living an insurgent gorilla life on the sheep farm, it should be an interesting biomass comparison between a regrowth forest and a sheep farm with trees. Okay, that's the endangered species sanctuary side of the fence. So let's go for a bit of a walk. And we'll see what we can find on the sheep farm. In the cumulo basalt eucalypti cloud forest. We're walking on a sheep track. You see the difference in ground cover and vegetation? Pretty pronounced, isn't it? That's what's called grazing pressure. I wonder if the poor little tomatoes can survive out here. Ha! Ah, look at that. I do believe we're onto something. What's that? I think it is. Absolutely, positively. Wild, feral, free range tomatoes escaped from the supermarket, colonizing the very feral rabbit burrows. So, therefore, I suppose, in the event that there's uh, some interruption to the fuel supply and there's no diesel to run the trucks to carry food to the supermarkets where there currently exist. Nine meals on the shelves for every citizen in town and in every suburban town and city in the country. Nine meals, three days, just in time delivery. I think wild feral free range tomatoes are a really clever idea. After all, this basalt trap rock is totally vile country for digging in. Any half wit can see that. <coughs> to my way of thinking, if the rabbits are prepared to dig their holes in this sort of country, where the rocks are growing so close together, there's barely room 
for grass to get its roots into the ground. Because let's face it, those rocks were not originally sitting in a layer like that. They were sort of spaced, kind of like sultanas in a fruitcake through the topsoil that used to be here. Until 150 years ago when the sheep farmers paid the unemployed Chinese miners after the gold mines had gone broke to run around shepherding the sheep with an axe and ring barking the trees so they could overgraze it. And then after they'd overgrazed the place, then they had a drought, a really good hot fire, and then after that they overgrazed it again and had another drought and another hot fire, and then they got torrential rains. And with no vegetation after the drought to hold the dry soil together, this place lost between half a metre and a metre of topsoil. Some places lost two metres of topsoil. A place called Waterloo Range between Glen Innes and Inverell. So yeah, the only way I can see to get vegetables going in this sort of country, on the rock block, is to use my famous world's simplest, cheapest, council approved dry composting toilet to generate a veritably perfect underground railway for refugee captive tomatoes who want their children and offspring to go free and live free wild in the Australian forest where they hope in time to join the likes of these trachymene incisor wild native parsnips which are considered the best value wild native food plant to have survived the coming of the sheep and potato brigade around here transforming this into a malt liquor video warbles on a lot to youtube cheers I do like drinking on a rainy day in the cloud forest. Ciao.